uh, and and it would uh, and people would have to go to Zoom to actually watch the show. That's how I would do it. Hi everyone, uh, you're watching uh, this week's episode of Social Chatter. My name is Christian Karasevich, and on our weekly social media marketing talk show, what we like to do is we like to bring you the latest social media news, trends, and tools that we think can help keep your business on the cutting edge of social. We know how difficult it can be, so what we do is we take all the news, we basically then try to break it down from a business purpose and give you some tips, some tricks that you can then use to apply these um, new announcements uh, in your own business so you actually have actionable tips that you can take away. Um, so tonight I'm joined by uh, Nick Rishwain, my co-host. Hey everyone. Hello. Hi. And uh, we're going to bring Nick on here real quick. How you doing, Nick? I'm doing well. How about you? Doing fantastic. Excellent. I'm excited uh, to have Jen Herman on because I think you guys got to meet in person or had met several times in person at Social Media Marketing World. I didn't get to make it there. Uh, but I love the logo in her background, so I am looking forward to uh, seeing her and, and hearing what her her input is on our stories today, which are predominantly Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so why don't we uh, bring Jen in and enter and let her say hello to everybody? Sounds good. Hey everybody! Oh, that is zoomed in on me. Yeah, yeah I'm working on, on that part. Well. We, we are zoomed in. It is. It's a little late in the day to be that close to my face, but hey, there I am. Um, <laughs> so, and my dog is uh, is barking in the background. She wanted to be present when we got introduced. So, um, I'm here. My dog Roxy is in the background. So, if you hear her, that's that's the noise in the back. Um, and I'm super excited to be here and talk about uh, what Nick was talking about. We've got Facebook and Facebook and Instagram integration and all the fun things we got going on tonight. Um, I am Jen Herman. I'm at Jen's underscore trends, as you can see on there um, on Instagram and Twitter. That's where you can find me. Excellent. Thank you, Jen, and thanks for being here tonight. And we've got our technical director working on the Zoom because <laughs> I noticed I noticed I was incredibly zoomed in as well. Uh, and your glasses look a lot better than my bald head does when we're <laughs> zoomed in. So, so we'll uh, we'll let Christian work on that. Preferably the faster the better, there, Christian. But don't but don't uh, don't be overwhelmed. You got so, it. Our stories tonight, I think we'll pop right into those uh, for those who are maybe waiting for us to get started. And we start with, and this, I'm assuming, Jen, this is something that you're interested in, and there's not really a, an entire story on this, Christian, or if there was, I didn't get the article, but it's really about managing Instagram through your Facebook page, uh, and that's... Uh, you can now add your Instagram account to Facebook so that you can easily edit your account details, create Instagram ads, and more right in your Facebook page. And the example you had for us, uh, Christian, was the Social Chefs uh, page. Jen, what are your thoughts on this? Is this something, it sounds like you're big on Instagram. Are you also pretty active on Facebook? And is this something that you'll find useful for your business? Yeah, so I'm obviously huge on Instagram. Um, that's my presence of, and platform of choice, but I'm also very present um, on my Facebook business page and Facebook as a personal user. Uh, those are probably my two dominant profiles. So I definitely find this interesting. Um, I kind of have this update. I have like half this update on my business page. So I can go into the settings. If you go into your business page and you go to settings, you can actually find an option that as you can see on the screen, shows Instagram and allows you to go in and edit your Instagram profile. Um, you can see some of your Instagram information, but I still have the older page version, which means I have a messages, not an inbox. And the only way to get this app integration um, properly is if you have it where it calls it an inbox and not messages. If you have messages like me, you can't use this whole feature. Um, but that inbox feature allows you to actually respond to your Instagram messages and messenger messages all within your Facebook business page. So for businesses, and we all know Instagram is mobile only. You can't upload photos on a desktop unless you get into the whole, you know, back-end techie side of things and weird scheduling tools. But really, they're... Instagram is making it more and more easy to do more things from the desktop. And this is part of that integration. Instagram, I feel like, has done a lot in the last year to really favor marketers. And I think this is a step in that direction. So that 
those of us who are on our computers all day and have our Facebook business pages open, now we have the ability to actually go in and see any comments you're getting on Instagram and respond directly from Facebook. You don't have to go over to your phone and, and you know, you can stay more on top. You're less likely to miss those notifications if you're seeing that in your business page manager. Um, so it's good. But for me, there's also a negative side of it that I always warn people of, which is I love that native interaction of being on Instagram or being on Twitter or being on Pinterest. And when you use another tool or a dashboard, you miss that native interaction. And so while this could be a great helpful tool i don't want people to fall into the crutch of just only relying on this to respond to comments and then they're not on instagram and they're ignoring that actual interaction that happens on that platform right and i think you know i don't have any any data on this jen but i know that when i when i post something natively within and, and this goes kind of cross-platform twitter facebook um instagram when i'm natively in a platform those posts tend to do better. So, yes. it, 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 as much I, as they tell us that it doesn't matter, it so matters. It does. <laughs> it seems to matter. I seem to get more interaction, not on a buffered tweet, but on a tweet that I send while I'm in the app. Uh, it, it, just as an example, I'm using that as a as a, just an individual example. But I, I seem to notice the same thing with Facebook across the board and. Uh, in Instagram, I only post natively. Uh, I don't use any any other uh, tools for Instagram, as that's not my my primary uh, platform. But um, where do you do you see now? Christian and I have discussed this, and and while he's while he's working on making me look better because you look fantastic, <laughs> while he's working on making me look better. Uh, I want to know, do you think that what, we, what we've what we thought in previous shows is that this is eventually, we're going to see a full integration between Instagram and, and, and Facebook. Do you think that's the case? We now have, uh, we have issues like this where you can now manage Instagram from your Facebook page. You have stories on four different platforms <laughs> that Facebook owns. Uh, Facebook owns. And it, it seems like, why do I need all these different apps? Or it, it's feeling that way now. Certainly, there are go where your audience is that that sort of uh, uh, that thought process, which I have to agree with. But do you think that we're going to see a Facebook Instagram full integration at some point? I don't. I hope we don't ever see a full integration, and okay. I don't think we will. I think we'll see some integration. Things like you know ads. The ad manager for Instagram and Facebook is obviously the Facebook manager. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing something like this where you're managing comments from the Facebook business page. If you're connected with a business profile on Instagram, then it's automatically connected to your Facebook business profile. So that's an easy integration, and it makes it easier for marketers. Kind of like I was you know talking about earlier. So I see them making some of those integrations. I could see some additional directions they might want to go in terms of again the cross promotion and going back and forth between platforms. And if you share something to Instagram, sharing to Facebook and vice versa. Um, but I really hope they don't go full integration. And I don't think they will just because of the fact that although, you know, Facebook is trying to take over the world and they pretty much are. Um, mm -hmm. It's, I don't think that it's a smart business idea to erase the need for people to be on Instagram because for the reasons we're talking about, if everyone can do everything in Facebook, then they won't be on Instagram. And if they're not on Instagram, they're not going to have the ability to place ads. They're not going to have that user interaction and they don't want to lose that. Even if we're just talking about the small percentage of marketers who in our world seems like a hundred percent of the universe, but in reality is a small portion of the world. I don't think it would be a smart business decision for them to ever make any sort of full integration. Yeah, uh, I, I, that's that. You made some excellent points there on the full integration. I'll tell you then where I would like to, and, and this is just this is not one of our topics, but maybe what I'd like to see is now I'm not using WhatsApp, but I'm now using Instagram, Facebook, Facebook app, and Messenger. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'd rather see them. You know, they moved us. They moved Messenger out of the original Facebook app, and maybe I'd like to just see that get fully integrated back into... Just, I agree. Just to limit I, the number of apps that I have to go to. And to it is one of those things. I mean, and my whole thing, and again, we can go down a million rabbit holes today, sure. so if we start going down there, pull me back. But even yeah. when it comes to the whole stories, I'm like, we have, like you said, we have stories on four platforms. 
why not just have one story on one platform or have the same thing integrated across? Like if you put a story on Instagram, then it goes to Messenger and it goes to Facebook automatically. Why do you have to have four different stories? I'm not going to post the same thing four different times. Nope. So there's things like that that I think could be better integrated. Um, but in terms of, you know, full integration, I, I think they like having their hands in lots of little different pots and just except from WhatsApp and Messenger and everything and owning all of that and just taking over the global domination. <laughs> yes, I and I think that's uh, that that is definitely the the uh, end game here is is to become the the WeChat of America and or of the Western world, I should say. Yeah. Um, let's move on to our next topic. Uh, you didn't go down too bad of a rabbit hole there. I could have probably easily kept going. But our next topic <laughs> is is also and Christian, did you have any input on that? I did I know that you're pretty busy with, with working on our on our enlarged images. Uh, so I didn't know if you wanted to add anything in there. Um on the part about you know, on the fact that you know you have Instagram within Facebook, I mean I I do agree with you all, like there needs to be some sort of synergy on uh, being able to have different uh, social media channels with different story features. Like I think it's just getting to be too much. Um, but I also have seen a lot of people saying, Hey, you know, like everybody's saying it's too much, but I really don't think it's, I think it's too much because people are not good at storytelling. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, like people think like, Oh, like I got to do the, I got to go on this network and I got on, on that one. But the thing is their lives aren't that, their lives are not that exciting. Ow. Um, or they don't know how to, <laughs> or they don't know how to make it exciting on each platform. Um, you know, they think like, hey, I'm going to take this photo or I'm going to take that video and I'll, I'll put it here and I'll put it here. Um, there's different, you know, there's all sorts of other little apps that you can use to create little smaller pieces of content to add to stories and whatnot and to make them uh, interesting to that audience. Um, but just because there's all these networks and they all have similar features doesn't mean you have to use them. Right. Of course. Thanks. And I think it's, it, I have to point out that I saw someone post on Facebook today that she's a friend of mine and she's a fellow marketer like us and she's like okay so of her you know however many hundreds of friends like 36 people are using stories on facebook only seven of them are you know not marketers right. and you know it's we of course jump on these things positively mm -hmm. or negatively and it's you know we can't stop talking about it but the average user half of them don't even know what stories are no. half of them don't know what to do with them because they haven't heard about it in every blog post they've read for the last two weeks. Right. So there, it, it <laughs> takes a while for that average user to adopt it and see where that platform takes that usage to. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree entirely. I, I looked across the board as, you know, as soon as it came up on my phone, I looked across the board and I said, hey, I watch stories by these people on other platforms. I'm, I'm not watching their stories here. <laughs> it was like, I don't need to watch it here. Uh, exactly. It doesn't mean that that's how I'm going to view it forever. But, but that was, I, I, these are all the people that I interact with on, in Facebook groups and on Instagram mm -hmm. and on Snapchat. And, you know, okay, well, this is just one more thing that, that I, I'm not needing. And I don't see any of the other people in my Facebook community who are not in social media marketing or, or using social media marketing, uh, the way we do, uh, who are really using it yet. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah, and for me, I tested it out today, but I, you know, I, I've said this before, and tell me your thoughts on this, Jen, but my Facebook, um, and this is probably our, our larger story. I should wait to get until we get <laughs> to share with the camera. Let's, we'll, we'll hold off on that for okay. now. Let's go back to... To stay on topic. <laughs> stay on topic. Introducing message reactions and mentions for Messenger. So this came out uh, March 23rd, and uh, Messenger is a great way to communicate. Uh, what they've come up with is message reactions, uh, or the ability to react to an individual message with a specific emotion, quickly showing acknowledgement or expressing how you feel in a lightweight way. So it's I'm going to summarize this really simply. It it, it it seems to be emojis, emoji reactions to something that somebody posts in Messenger, uh, almost predominantly. There are some other other uses, but it, it's not dissimilar to what uh, iMessage recently did with their ways to react to a text message by a thumbs up or some sort of emotion. Uh, and they did come up with the one thing that I liked about this, and I'm hoping this will come over to Facebook proper, 
is mentions is they have this mentions feature in Messenger. Mentions is a way to directly notify somebody when they've been mentioned in a conversation. So rather than getting the notifications that somebody replied to something that you're participating in, and you don't have to reply necessarily, it's just a comment, they came up with mentions. So to type, to mention someone, type the at symbol or start typing the first few letters of the name or nickname of the person you want to notify and select them from the list. When the message is sent, it will appear highlighted text for others in the group to see. That I liked more, you know, more than I found there was any necessity for the emoji reactions in Messenger. I did like that the fact that they're trying to simplify the notifications of, hey, you were specifically mentioned, you may need to respond to this. What are your thoughts on this, Jen? I agree with you um, with the app mentions. It's, that's, I think, an added bonus. I think that's going to make it a lot easier, especially in those group conversations and things like that. You know, I've gotten, I, we've all been stuck in those ones, like, 25 people in a messenger chat and you're like I just need to delete this because I can't keep up with the notifications and it's it's right. annoying and overwhelming and I just want to know when someone has something important to say not what 28 people have to say great you know right. um, so I think that would be a great added feature for people um, like you said for that notification function and, and a little bit more streamlined in the communication personally I like the emoji reaction type um, because I do use that a lot even on Facebook rather than just using the like button I use the ha-has and the, the wows and the sads and those sorts of things and that's really what this is now that mm -hmm. being said because this rolled out when we were at social media marketing world I did not know this had rolled out and I was on messenger yesterday and today and I keep getting these little things popping up on my messages with the emotional reactions I'm like what is this where is this coming from I had literally had no idea this had rolled out and I was like what are these things popping up on my messages and then I found out about it and then obviously we're talking about it so I was like oh this makes a whole lot more sense so I was seeing it not even knowing what it was um, or how to do it I was like I had to read the the article to actually find out how to you know tap and hold the message and then you can drag your finger through and choose um, the emotional reaction so I think they're cool I like them um, it's something a little bit easier and better than the thumbs up like which I'm let's admit there are plenty of times we get lazy when we're doing messenger and you're just like someone right it's like you know typing the letter k like it's like someone yes. gives you a page long and you're like thumbs up yeah it's the <laughs> so, new lol the new k yeah, the, exactly yeah yeah. So this is it's easy but it's it's a little bit more personal than just throwing up the thumbs up. So I really like it. I think it was a not, you know, absolutely needed feature, but I think it's a fun added feature that will get a lot of use for some people. Yeah, and and I think and, and I think that's a personal use thing uh, more yeah. more than anything because I I tend not to use that many emojis. Um, but I do like uh, like we talk about it. I think that at mention thing that will be that's a game changer for me as far as conversations and I'm hoping that they move it over into Facebook proper yeah. so that so that you don't have to go and look at a comment in unless you're mentioned in it because you know when you're if you're in a group and 49 people have responded <laughs> to it and you keep getting a notification yes. well, I don't know what all then you just stop looking at the notifications because you just assume it's another mindless one and you just did, exactly. then you end up missing the ones you need because you've ignored the other 38 <laughs> exactly and you get in the in the the point where you're just going to uh ignore anything that comes in yeah and anything that comes in so anyway let's move on I, I i mean i think these are improvements for messenger uh and It'll be interesting to see if I start adapting more to using more emojis now that they, now that I have the option. Um, our next option, our next item, Christian, did you have anything to add there? You're being, I know you're quiet because your your throat is uh, you're coughing a lot. But so uh, um, I I do want to say I don't have a way to get the uh, to get our images uh, not scaled up so much. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's <laughs> a screen resolution thing or something, but. Um, We'll make sure we get that one fixed later on. Um, but going back to this topic, um, I have noticed that I actually, kind of like Jen here said, um, I actually just got all of these new Facebook features today, maybe like a couple hours ago, um, even though nice. some of them rolled out last week. Um, so, but I have had a chance to play with them. I mean, I think the messenger thing, I think that makes sense to kind of bring those together um, in line with, you know, typical like uh, Facebook replies through the mobile app. Um, and also through desktop. So I think that it's great to have that. Um, I also am noticing, you know, 
Facebook is jumping into a lot of different, um, they're jumping into pretty much like if, uh, you know, if like, for instance, iPhone already has, you know, a feature, um, they're pulling that, you know, if Snapchat has some stuff, they're using that. If LinkedIn has something, they're using that. So I'm noticing kind of uh, not as much innovation, I guess, more like building on some of the successful things that people are kind of used to doing. So um, by the way, so for now, what, what we're gonna do with the show, I'm gonna keep it with the topics. Uh, we'll keep that up for now. Um, if I get something worked out, I'll let you know. Okay, excellent. I do want to thank uh, our folks over on Facebook for joining. We've got Lisa Monks. We've got Nats Wang here. We've got Melissa, and we had uh, Moshe Isaacian was here as well. So thank you all for your support. Apologize for the video tonight, but we're glad you're here. I hope, uh, hope this information, uh, you're finding some of it useful. We're going on to our next topic which is also a messenger, as I mentioned earlier in the show. We're, we're heavy on Facebook, Instagram uh, this week, but uh, they had a lot of uh, new introductions in the last seven or so days. This is introducing live location in Messenger. I think this is kind of handy. Uh, so this came out, uh, I think this was two days ago or three days ago, March 27th. They've got a new live location feature. Uh, it makes it simple and seamless for you to choose to share where you or where you are with your friends or your family. Rolling out globally and is available on both iOS and Android. This is for Facebook Messenger again. Uh, it's pretty simple with video. It allows when somebody says where you are, you tap the location icon, or tap the more icon and select the location and let them know. Uh, you'll see a map of your current location and the option to tap a blue bar to share your location. If you choose to share your live location, the person or people you share it with will be able to see where you are on a map for about 60 minutes. So I guess if you're stuck in traffic, although you shouldn't be texting and driving, uh, if you are preferably in a ride-sharing service at that point, then you can share something like this. I think that makes it pretty easy. It's reminded me a little bit of the Apple Maps option of dropping a pin. What are your thoughts on this, Jen? I love it. Um, I just heard about this, and I think it's really cool. It was actually, of course, because we were just doing the conference last week here in San Diego and trying to meet up with people. We were like, Hey, we're out for dinner at this restaurant. Like this would be that perfect situation where you just pin your location to the group. And then everyone just, they see it on the map. They know where they are. Some people are five blocks South and some people are two blocks North and everyone can just come and meet because you're, you've pinned where you are on the map and you're not trying to be okay. Well, I'm at, you know, 313 Broadway and they're like okay well where's Broadway like they're from out of town they don't know where it is so I think that would be a really great tool for that I think if you again are at um, like concerts or large events where you want to be able to say hey I'm over at this venue location or I'm doing this sort of thing uh, again to have friends meet up with you if you are wanting to brag about the fact that you're on vacation and you want to show that you're, you know, in some luxurious Mediterranean location or something fun and you want to show the world that you're there, then, of course, that's another fun way to do it. So there's a lot of fun applications. Of course, if you're using Messenger for business, there's a business application as well. If you, you know, if you're doing pop up things, if you're doing, you know, events in your community, if you want to show people where you are, you know, within your business and things like that, there's a lot of ways you could use this for that purpose as well. So I definitely think it's something that will take some adoption. Again, yeah. I think us talking about it because we heard about it, we read about it, we want to share it with everybody. I think the average user isn't going to know about it until someone does it to them and they go, where did this yes. map come from? How is this working? So it might take a while to really effectively roll out to most people. Yeah, but it's a, you're right about it being a great communication tool, especially uh, for those of us who attend conferences and you're trying to, uh, trying to get a group of people together or at least indicate where you're going to be so that you can meet up with a group at a later time. Uh, yeah. I do think that's good. Christian, what do you think? Um, I think that if I'm a business, I mean, I think this is going to be really, uh, really handy. I mean, one, I want to make sure I've got my, uh, you know, I want to make sure I have my uh, account information all updated so that if somebody happens to drop a pen about, you know, my business, that everything is there. Um, I think that, like, this is going to be, you know, again, this is kind of borrowing from other features like, you know, Apple Maps, Google Maps. Um, but I think that this would have been very handy last week. But moving <laughs> <Yes>. forward, <laughs> I mean, it'll be... It'll be great, you know. I think it'll be great as people start to kind of get used to um, 
doing this. Um, and then a couple of things that are important, by the, by the way, you can share your location and it can be up there for um, up to 60 minutes um, yeah. with somebody, which is nice. So this isn't a feature that like, oh, it's shared with everyone. Like, you know, you can just turn it on, turn it off pretty easily. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a good idea. Uh, let's get to let's go over to our next topic, which is bringing live 360 video to everyone. This is also a Facebook this is Facebook <laughs> Live, and this came out yesterday. Uh, and since launching Live 360 in December, we've seen the authenticity of Facebook Live and the immersive nature of 360 media come together to transport people into moments and experiences right as they happen. Today, we're excited to make Live 360 available globally to all profiles and pages. Now, anyone with a 360 camera can go live in 360 degrees on Facebook. They also list some compatible cameras, show you how to get started. I think this is great. You know what? They, they, have, they have gone much faster on this front than Periscope, who should have made this available to everybody a long time ago. Uh so I think this is great for people. I think it will. I think the techies and those in business who, uh, and especially in things like travel and hospitality, and and want to make up some from some fancier video and some more interesting video, will have a lot uh, of a lot of things that they can work with now uh, to make their location. Uh, look more exciting, more fun, show what people are doing. What do you think, Jen? Yeah, I mean, I think this just proves that, you know, Facebook has gone all in on video and they've gone all in on live video. The fact that, like you said, they're rolling these things out so quickly that they're, you know, they're going from alpha to beta to full launch in, in short periods of time. They know what they're doing. They're investing into it and they want this to get adopted. I mean, they're putting a huge push behind live video for everyday users. They're putting a huge push now on, you know, the 360 video. Again, there's part of me that questions the adoption because we live in the marketing world and a lot of us, you know, walk around with 360 cameras. Again, we were at the conference last week and we took a group photo and you see all these 360 cameras shoot up out of the, out of the sky and you're like, what is going on over here? <laughs> but the average person doesn't have a 360 camera. You know, that's not something, again, tourism and hospitality and businesses should be investing in these tools and they should definitely be making use of this as part of their marketing strategy. But in terms of even, you know, let's just say I'm watching a live video. If I don't know what 360 video is, I'm not going to know to pan and scroll and move through. I'm just going to be watching whatever they're showing on that main screen. So it's up to us as the marketers to let people know we're doing 360 live video. You know, we're doing it at this location. Join us for a, a live 360 and make sure you're panning around and see Like, it's going to take some additional work, I think, from the marketers to get a quality response. But, I mean, if you're not doing live video and if you're not trying at least panoramic style 360, you mm -hmm. really, this is proof that Facebook has gone all in and, you know, we all need to start working towards this adoption. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. And right now, you know, I, you do get an indication that a video is 360 with the really annoying globe in the <laughs> center of the picture. Right. <laughs> uh, but I guess that is their attempt to get people to, to pay attention, <laughs> to try and adopt this type of thing. So uh, I, I think you're right as far as adoption. I think it'll be slow. I think those of us in in the space will do more of that. Uh, but it'll be interesting, and, and I definitely think a business, especially those that we've mentioned, hospitality. Uh, although I think you could do this in a retail business as well. If you're if you're creative with your storytelling, I think you mm -hmm. can show some really interesting behind the scenes uh, type of type of video with this. Well, Christian, even anyone you, who's in politics or speaking or you know motivational speakers, imagine having someone do a 360 where you can see literally behind the stage, off to the stage, in front of the stage. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate this for. Different purposes. You just you have to put on that creativity thinking cap to really find the right application. Absolutely, Christian. What do you think? Okay, so I love the idea of live three hundred and sixty video. Um, I've been a big supporter of just three hundred and sixty overall, like since it started coming out, like when they did you know photos and then they did three hundred and sixty video, and now they've got live video. Um, I know a couple of you know Nick. I know a couple of shows ago that like episodes ago we actually talked about 
kind of the privacy implications of doing something like this. Um, yeah, we did. I love the idea of being able to do 360. You know, I'm, I'm going to kind of address everybody's points, yours and also uh, Jen, yours for sure. So um, I think there's definitely a lot of privacy concerns with doing 360 video. I mean, you know, if you're going to, you know, for instance, if I'm in my office, for instance, I wouldn't do it right now because, hey, what would you see? You'd see my desk and you'd see, you know, uh, couches and whatnot, you know, behind me. Um, doesn't sound too exciting, right? Um, but if I'm, you know, it, you know, and also if I'm going to be doing something like this, I really need to make sure that, you know, the environment I'm in doesn't have like any of that sensitive information, whether it's, you know, maybe it's got, you know, a credit card lying around on your desk or something to that effect, you know, stuff that people can, or, you know, phone numbers or passwords to things, you know, people write passwords down, they stick them on the wall. Um, but so I think one, there's some privacy concerns with this, but I love the idea of being able to create this immersive live 360 environment. You know, Jen, I mean, this works great for, um, you know, real estate. You know, this is this is definitely really cool. I mean, for real estate. Yes, like, that's a great example. Very good example. Um, real estate restaurants. You know, if I'm in the restaurant industry, I can get in. You know, I can give you basically a tour of my restaurant. Um, if we've got something cool going on, for instance, like say it's a holiday. Um, hey guys, here's you know here's what the sh what the you know restaurant looks like. We've done some decorating or something like that for you know Mother's Day, which is uh, coming up. Uh, what in about a month or so, and then. Um, you know, if we've got like St. Patrick's Day, hey guys, you know, here's here's some of the stuff we have for St. Patrick's Day. Or you could highlight some of the different things that are going on, almost like you're a live, like, news broadcaster. Um, yeah. Kind of like, you know, almost like if I'm a restaurant, for instance, I don't just need like somebody to manage my social media. I need somebody full time that actually works at the restaurant that's not just like a server or a hostess, for instance, you know, that, that can really get in there and like, you know, in a way, capture some of this. Um, now, and I would caution one thing with that with you with that particular example, Christian. Yeah, I would caution not just showing the kitchen unless you keep the kitchen really spotless. This <laughs> could really mm -hmm. that type of thing. If you're not doing a good job back there, as but far imagine as, if you had a great kitchen, how fun would it be to do 360 inside the kitchen, like in the like not necessarily maybe the heart of a dinner rush, but imagine like <laughs> being able to see what a kitchen looks like because. I mean, if you've worked in the restaurant world, you know what a kitchen looks like, and it's crazy and chaotic. But if you've never worked there, you don't understand how much is really going on in the kitchen. And that would be such a great way to showcase to your customers, this is how, you know, the food is prepared. And this is what, you know, the kitchen goes through. And this is how four people crank out 400 meals and, you know, yeah. all that different kind of stuff. It, there's so many fun ways that, like I said, that kind of behind the scenes and that 360 really just gives that whole new capacity of, of a view. That I agree. I agree. I think it's a great, but I also I, I think my caution is kind of the same as as Christian's caution on privacy issues is mm -hmm. that make sure your staging is appropriate before you decide, hey, we're going to give people a behind the scenes. So it's not just the restaurant world. It's it's for privacy purposes as well. Oh, 100 percent. You got to watch your staging. Well, and I would also say, if we're going to talk privacy, you have to think about who's in that video. Like when you're, you know, if you're standing there with your camera and you know, you know how people dodge out of the way when they see you moving with the camera because they know you're filming. If right. they don't know they're in a 360 panoramic shot, you know, are those people who don't want to be captured on film? Are there children? Are there people who are potentially underage in a restaurant that could look liable and put you at risk, you know, from the perspective of underage drinking? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into the privacy issues of the people that are in your videos. And then you almost have to put a disclaimer that if you're going to have those films in any capacity of a business, whether it's a restaurant, hospitality, real estate, you're at a park, you're at anything, you almost have to tell people, look, we're going to be filming a live 360 video. If you don't want to be on video, tell us now because it's going to happen. Luckily, in some of those situations, there it's in public, so there's there's not a uh, there's no Reasonable expectation of privacy. of privacy. Yeah, so that's good. But I but it is a caution because you could, whether or not you're breaking any laws or or rules, you may be alienating a customer who didn't want to yes. be. And and that's something to keep in mind. And with and children and minors, that brings in, you know, the parents don't want their kids being showcased. Right. I mean, you that opens up a whole other can of worms. So, and I think we're going to see a lot of privacy rule changes. I mean, obviously, the, the government and, and mm -hmm. laws are always way behind where technology and modern society is. But I think we're going to see a lot of changes to privacy rules in the coming years because of things like this. It'll be interesting to see because some of those are wrapped up in the Constitution. So it yep. would have to be uh, 
a Supreme Court decision that would uh, change the reasonable yep. expectation of privacy. Uh, so let's move on to our next. Christian, did you have one more? Did Actually, yeah, I, want, I kind of want to go. I want to stick on this topic for a few more minutes here. So, sure. you know, one thing I was thinking, like, you know, if you go to, for instance, a movie lot, for instance, if you're in, you know, California, you know, you go to Paramount mm-hmm. or Warner Brothers, you know, they've got signs that say, hey, you know, live filming in progress. Um, mm-hmm. Do you, you know, do you all think that like businesses are going to have to put, you know, instead of just saying, hey, we accept Visa, MasterCard, American Express and Discovery, <laughs> put up a sign that says, you know, like potential live filming in progress. I mean, yeah, um, I honestly do. I mean, it's just it's the same thing when you call into anything now and they say this call may be recorded because mm-hmm. they have to tell you if it's being recorded. I've gone to conferences and they have signs up at the conference entrances that say this conference is going to be filmed and used for marketing material and live broadcasts. Mm-hmm. Like you are waiving your what your right as entry into this conference that you will be videotaped. Um, again, you run the risk of alienating some customers because they don't want to be filmed, but at least you're telling them, at least you're giving them that option. And maybe you do something where you have a non-film area of Mm -hmm. your location. You know, you only film in certain areas of the hotel or certain areas of the resort or certain Mm -hmm. areas of the restaurant. So you have that you know, open door policy type thing that people know that there's areas they can go if they don't want to be filmed. Other people are going to be like, uh, I'm going down there for dinner because I'm going to get on camera. Like, mm, it's going to yeah. bring in business because they want that opportunity. But I absolutely think we're going to see that shift where people are going to start putting up signs and notifications if it becomes a regular part of their strategy. And I think it's smart. And I think, and, and I think, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, and it also kind of makes me like, it kind of makes me think of like all those times where, you know, you see, um, somebody committed a crime, for instance, and they got caught on social media. Um, <laughs> in a way, I almost see this this heightening, like law enforcement's use of social media as well. I mean, you know, now they're not just going to have regular photos and and videos; they're going to have three sixty photos 60. and videos where you mm-hmm. can have somebody in that. You know, going back to like you guys were talking about underage drinking, but you could have somebody saying, "Hey, like you know, that could implement. You know, that could, for instance, apply to court cases, Nick." You know, mm-hmm. somebody happened to be, uh, you know, being caught in, you know, a 360 video, um, you know, and then like they've got some sort of pending like court case that could easily apply to that, couldn't it? This is already, yeah, oh, yeah and it's already happened in uh, with live video in multiple mm-hmm. occasions where crimes are committed uh, on live uh, in and actually recorded intentionally to live video, right. which is bizarre. But most criminals have never been accused of being in. It's definitely <laughs> intelligent, um, but there's been some really horrific incidents uh, on live video that have been captured on live video, and of course those are going to be. Uh, and guess what? The the police forces these days have really great communications with Facebook as far as we we found out about it. We asked Facebook to take the video offline, and we asked them to send it send us the the copy of the video. Because some of these things have been really, really horrific, uh, and not not to be shared here, but um, and so that just becomes evidence, and and that's you committing the crime in real time. Uh, that's and you were recording it. This isn't some. <laughs> CCTV well, that's really fuzzy. You're right there in it, you know. And the thing with 360 that. I think from a law enforcement perspective, if we want to go down this road, is assume most of the time, like let's say you're at an event and you're filming something that's going on in front of you. Your camera is facing forward. Most of the time, the crime is happening behind you because everyone's backs are turned, right? So you don't have it on video because everyone's cameras are pointed forward. But if you're filming on 360 video, you're getting what's happening behind you because you have that 360. So from that law enforcement perspective, you do have a broader scope and you can see things that normally wouldn't be caught on camera because people People aren't turned towards it. So I think there, you know, if we want to go down that rabbit hole, there's a lot of applications, not only from law enforcement, but from security, um, you know, event maintenance and things like that. There's a lot of things that could be a very beneficial tactic to 360. Oh, absolutely. Because how many times have you watched the, the criminal TV show and you're know, like, come on, oh, the CCTV didn't get the whole thing, right? Yeah. Right, I mean, you, exactly. You, you, it was just now, outside the frame. <laughs> come on, you know, and you feel that disappointment that you didn't get to see what happened. And, and uh, well, you may not have that issue uh, in, in, with, with the ability to use 360 video. Uh, so there are a lot of applications here. And what will really be interesting is uh, 
what I look forward to seeing. We're seeing some of it in the virtual reality spaces already uh, in, in legal technology. And what I'm interested to see will be the crime scene reconstruction because you can now go in and you can video the crime scene in 360. Then you may not even have to recreate it for a jury, but uh, you can walk them through exactly the exact dimensions. Now there will be some... You'll probably still have to have evidentiary, uh, what they'll call presentations, trial presentations. They'll probably still reconstruct it because it's going to look a little goofy when you walk in 360. That right. desk is going to be Things a little stretched way and... that, than it looks like it is. That, what's le- the weapon that's laying over there may not be as close to the, the victim as you thought it was mm-hmm. or something to that. But, but it will give some really interesting ways to recreate a crime scene or an accident scene or something to that effect. So and just because we've gone down this rabbit hole, I just have to point out, I don't think you guys know I have a master's in forensic science, and I could literally do this no, topic sure. all night long. <laughs> uh, awesome. You and I are going to have to talk about more <laughs> in the future because I, uh, I work in the legal tech space and watch this it stuff. It sounds pretty- like it. I love it. Yeah, so... so- by the way, Nick, I, I want to. And by the way, Jen, I didn't know that um, about you. You know that you had that background in forensic science. I mean, that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, really I have awesome. a very diverse background. I I have a master's in forensic science. I have a bachelor's in biology. I work in marketing. I do social media. <laughs> I've been in sales. You name it. And yeah, life happens. <laughs> it's crazy how it happens, right? I went to law school, and then I went to the public sector, and then I went to the private sector, and now I'm in legal tech and marketing. It's just bizarre how it all works. <laughs> We're all in marketing of sorts. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, one other thing that I, you know, we're talking about this whole like live 360 thing. We're talking about streaming video. The one thing that I have not seen that, you know, I love the fact that we're moving, basically moving towards, you know, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. Um, I've not seen changes, though, to data. And what I mean by data is not like the information that's being collected, but more like the amount of data that these things are using to be able mm-hmm. to broadcast. What do you all think about that? Because, I mean, this is this stuff is moving ridiculously fast. I mean, I can't believe that, like, this week, Facebook released, like, five big updates. Um, yeah. But what do you guys think about the whole data thing? Like, do they need to bump that, you know, number out somehow? You know, that, that meaning, like, you know, the two gigs of data that somebody gets. Um, how do you think that can be addressed? Because if I'm a business and I, and I want to be streaming all of this stuff... Um, Chances are I don't have Wi-Fi set up in my business. I don't use my phone. <laughs> I'm hoping that businesses have Wi-Fi set up in their business. It's gonna, it's just going to be a necessity because the data plan is going to get expensive with all this stuff. Well, even I was looking at a tool. Um, it was a video tool that was on display um, at Social Media Marketing mm-hmm. World, and they're like, "Well, if you do the free plan, you get two gigs of a video storage, but to get anything." Like to go up to like fifty gigs, you had to buy like the monthly plan. I'm like, what am I gonna do with two gigs? Like that's like one video. Like yeah. mm-hmm. that, that that's not good. I mean, unless I'm making like a whole bunch of little ten second videos, I'm like, I'm gonna blow through two gigs on one video. I can't mm-hmm. possibly afford the free or have the free plan. I'd have to buy. And of course, that's their whole thing, right? They want you to buy the membership plan. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether that goes for anything, like in those situations, you know, whether it's your video storage platforms, whether it's your mobile phone data plans, anything, it, I mean, we're getting to the point where, you know, it's just, it's going to be excessive. Um, I think it's going to be something where, you know, having a 100 gig plan is going to be like the base entry model level <laughs> because we're going to need it. Do you guys remember the days when we needed it, when we wanted more minutes? Oh, I gotta got I gotta have two thousand right? minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you talked to somebody on your phone? You know, just it's it, it or that you needed any more than fifteen minutes on the phone with somebody that you didn't handle it over text. So right. <laughs> Should, let's get to our last story because I know we're running late here, sure. and I'm pretty sure that our guests are tired of seeing the the image that we're on right now. Uh, so more ways to share with Facebook camera, which is interesting that they that they pitched this this whole thing is is share with Facebook camera when this is really essentially about Facebook stories, mm-hmm. uh, but it's the, they're they're trying to say that the camera is. Is this another? Is this another dig at Snapchat? Because Snapchat yes. now now a camera company that they're <laughs> they're saying that our stories platform is is Facebook camera, uh, and and really all it is. I, I'm I'm not even going to read anything from the article. It is uh, 
Snapchat story or Facebook stories, and and it's a way to send a and and you can also do it. Just take a picture. I'm going to put a funny face on the picture, some sort of a mask. Uh, right now, they don't have masks. They're working on that. It looks like I thought they had masquerade. What happened to that? Um, I know. I don't know. They have some mask type things in the app. You have to swipe up and down to get them. Yeah. Um, in the camera app, but yeah, I haven't heard or seen anything from the masquerade, but there's still, like, I see people putting their, like, mask filters on photos on Facebook all the time, but th- I guess it's through Messenger. There's, the Messenger camera does that, um, which I guess, because there are different platforms, now Facebook has one, too, but... Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. This is a part of Facebook stories, but they're calling it the the new changes to camera because you can also send individual messages to people, I think, and, and you can put the, the the masks or lenses and filters on it. I guess lens is the appropriate term if we're talking Snapchat. Uh, so, you know, and, and this is, we started on this topic earlier. I thought we'd close up with this topic. To me, it's like this. I just tested out the Facebook stories uh, and I, I tried one of their filters uh, and and what I, and I've, ta- I've talked about this several times for Christian what I share on Snapchat in the community that I have on Snapchat is almost totally and completely separate than my community on Facebook and I share different content content that my family and my friends uh, that, that I see on a regular basis aren't going to understand because I, I, I have a little bit more, it's, it's more compartmentalized. So I, I'm not sure how I'll use this yet. Uh, what are your thoughts, Jen? I'm not going to use it. <laughs> to be, I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. I, I don't even, I'm on Instagram. I'm, I do Instagram and I don't even use Instagram stories because it's just not me. It's not my brand. I don't use Snapchat. I'm not going to use Facebook stories. I don't use messenger day. It's just not, my styling it's not my brand i'm not that kind of interaction um that being said i completely understand it for other applications i absolutely advocate for instagram stories for people and for businesses if it works for them and their brand um it's just for me maybe it's i'm just not add enough to use multiple different things (laughs) on one platform i just i'm like i want to post a photo of my kid doing something fun and I'm done. I don't, and the done. whole, it disappears in 24 hours. I don't want it to disappear in 24 hours. I want it to live on because I actually turn my Facebook and Instagram accounts into scrapbooks at the end of the year. So disappearing content doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Again, those short messages and, and going back and forth between friends when you're out at night or, or doing a party or you're at a wedding or you're something and you just want to share something funny between friends. I see that shareability and that kind of direct message Snapchat style. Um, but other than that, again, it's not something that translates to my usage. Okay. So personally, not going to use it. Excellent. That's hey, that, that's honesty. Uh, <laughs> and Christian, what are your thoughts? Well, okay, so I can't. Uh, one, I can't actually use the whole Facebook Stories thing yet because I actually don't have that. I, I got the update. I thought I had it, um, and then apparently I don't have it. So. Um, it's kind of strange. Uh, I know one other person that doesn't have it either. So you're not the only one, but you're one of few. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't, it's weird because I have like a bunch of other stuff that Facebook has released or hasn't released. But yeah, I don't have this yet. <laughs> so um, I think you know one. I kind of I tend to agree with actually with Jen here on this. I like the fact that you know you you mentioned that it doesn't fit with your brand. That's the biggest yeah. thing, like with all of these features, um, and it's not just like Facebook Stories. Like everybody thinks, like, hey, I have to use this because, hey, they put it out here in front of me. But you have to remember, you need to think for yourself as a business owner. How is this going to help you? Like, it, you know, if, if Stories is going to fit in your model, use it. But if it's not, you know, like, and don't say like, hey, you know, oh, I'm going to look at it once and it's not going to fit at all. Like, maybe you want to experiment with it. Try a couple of them and see what's going to work. And if you decide it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, and the clientele that you are going after, because right. you know if I'm using and that's sword- the thing is the audience, like my yeah. audience, even on Instagram, I've tried Instagram stories. My audience doesn't use Instagram stories. I've built my audience a certain way. The people who follow me are a certain interaction, and by comparison, Sue Zimmerman, who is also mm-hmm. the other major Instagram name, it's huge on stories, and her audience goes crazy for stories. But my audience doesn't. So even if it worked for my brand, mm-hmm. if my audience isn't paying attention there, then why should I be there? I need to be where my audience is. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. So, that, that's what it all comes down to. And my community happens to be on Snapchat. My family 
happens to be on Facebook, you know, mm-hmm. or family and, and some friends uh, and, and people that I haven't talked to in 15 years. <laughs> And those are the people on Facebook uh, in in social media marketers, but it's a different it's a different type of engagement than I have on on stories on Snapchat. Well, I think so, we have to point out too that Facebook Stories is for personal profiles. Mm-hmm. This right. isn't yeah. for business pages right. yet. That's right. Yet. I That's say yet. yet because I'm sure it will get there. So we're talking about these new tools, but that being said. A, a business should not be using a personal profile. Right. So unless you're using it for your own personal brand and you've got other you know, people there, but really this is a personal tool and Facebook is rolling this out for personal users. Mm-hmm. So if it's not something that works for you, then like you know, Christian was saying, then there's no need to jump on the bandwagon. Yes, uh, thank you for making that point. You know, I got so used to talking about stories across platforms <laughs> that I forget that it's not even uh, applicable yet to businesses. This is on your personal profiles across platforms. So, uh, good point. And Christian, that wraps up our stories for tonight. Uh, not our stories, our topic. <laughs> Actually, did, did you touch on the direct feature, by the way? I don't think I did. Did I have that one? So this, I must yeah, have missed it. So this is actually buried deep within this whole camera article. So the camera article talks about the new camera. It talks about Facebook stories a little bit, but there's a direct feature. And it's a really neat feature. It's all the way at the bottom of the article. But basically, um, it's an option that lets you share individual photos and videos with specific friends for a limited time. Um, so when somebody sends you like a photo or video uh, via direct um, – According to Facebook, your friends will be able to view it once and replay it or write a reply. But once the conversation <laughs> on the photo or video ends, the content is no longer visible in direct. Uh, it's a straight Snapchat. Uh, I was going to say that's so like original off. Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so if you played with Snapchat, you should be able to figure this one out. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Again, I mean, give us some tools. Okay, so we have two tools for you tonight, and you know, you guys probably noticed we started cutting down the number of tools because, hey, you know what? I was thinking about this yesterday, Nick. We have there's like tons of tools and tons of apps. Um, you know, I download something, I try it out for a little bit, and then I don't always. Most of the time, I don't go back to some of these tools um, just because you know, like there's only so much time in the day to be able to you know to get things done. So the first one is called Taco. And basically, you'll see this up on the screen here, but basically what it does is, you know, um, we have to-do lists everywhere. You know, we've got a uh, to-do list in our inbox, you know, for a Gmail user, um, if we're using like Asana or formerly Trello or GitHub, um, or let's, let me just think of some of these other ones, uh, Wonderlist, just to name a few. Oh, we also have Slack. Basically what this does is Taco app will combine all of your to-do lists into one place. Um, and that's actually nice and convenient. A lot of people, you know, they try to use their inbox to manage their to-do list. And that's like the worst thing you can do um, because, you know, you get an email there and it gets buried by, you know, 50, 100 emails. Um, so what this does, is basically, it's a Google uh, Chrome feature and it basically will let you combine all of these things into one. This could be emails, it could be support tickets, it could be issues, um, tasks, and so forth. So that's the first app for everybody today. Uh, Jen, have okay. you tried this one out, by the way? I have not. I only heard about it when uh, you sent me the the notes for tonight's okay. call. Um, and it's funny. I'm actually like I'm an old school note taker. Like my desk is literally covered in about a hundred sheets of paper that are all to do lists and yeah. notes. And I'm like, okay, so I just need this for all the paper on my desk because I don't use any of these apps. I don't use them to keep my life organized. It's this paper on my desk. So if someone has one of these for the paper on my desk, send that to me. So actually, <laughs> are you are you an iPhone user or an Android user? Android. Okay. I was gonna say um. Take a look at, uh, you may want to do a, a Google search for this, but there is a Post-it Note app. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it works for you. It's still on the phone. I'm like, I, don't, I just don't take notes on my phone. Like, well, no, I'm what a it actually writer. does is if you take your notes on paper, it will actually scan oh. Post-it Notes. Oh, see, now, now we're talking my language. Okay, I'm, I'm going to Google it. Here, let me Interesting see. Interesting that that, that uh, because I, for the most part, am a note taker, a handwritten note taker, uh, because I think I comprehend and remember better when I yes, do it that way. For so. sure. Yeah. So here it is, Jen. Actually, this is this is actually so this is the iPhone version. I'm assuming they have this for Android. Um, but basically, you take a picture of all your Post-it notes, um, and then it captures them. Nice. So that may be handy for you. Um, I'll see if I can find an Android version. Actually, it's all good. I'll find it. I can be resourceful. <laughs> so that's taco, that's taco app. Oh, and it, and it works for Evernote and stuff like that as well. But. The gist here is if you're a business, if you 
you know, if you keep um, electronic notes, digital notes everywhere in all these different places, this is a way to be able to combine them and to be able to go to one place to manage everything. Because there really is no perfect tool for that. I mean, you know, somebody wants to email us, somebody sends us a Facebook message. Um, you know, we've got things all over the place. But that's the first app for today. Okay. And what's our second? Uh, the second one is called, uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, it's called Musmidge. I'm not really sure if that's uh, pronounced properly, but this is a really, really, really cool app. So it's not just a video camera app, um, but it's it says it's an all-in-one video camera, but it's really cool. So you can do uh, you take uh, you can do video editing, you can uh, work with clips, you can apply filters, you can stabilize your video, you can apply different um, tra- uh, different um, they're called LUTs. Basically, it's a camera profile. Uh, over top of your what you've taken to give it a different look. It's kind of how movies do it. When you take like a black and white film, for instance, and you colorize parts of it, um, you know they're applying these different ta- lookup tables basically. Now, what's also cool though is they have this really neat green screen feature, or they call it a blue screen. But basically, it's the art of taking a solid background, putting it behind you, and then masking out, or basically applying a different background to yourself um, to replace the blue color. So. Um, that, for instance, for me at least, that's one of the most important uh, features of this because normally if you want to do something like that, you have to have um, a lot of really good and strong lighting and you have to have, you know, uh, the background doesn't need to be wrinkled and all that sort of stuff. But with this app, um, I've never been able to do it on a phone. And so now you actually can, which I think is fantastic um, to be able to, you know, to, instead of, you know, being at a conference and like having, you know, all this like stuff behind you, you can easily take a little collapsible blue screen with you, put behind you, and you can now uh, change the background right there on the spot. So really, really cool. Um, I like and it's that. a free app. So, um, so that's all I have for everybody, actually. Excellent. So we're in, we're at time. Would you use this, Jen? Well, since it's only for iPhone, I can't use you're it. But yeah, I. <laughs> it is one of those things. So I, I struggle to find good video editing software um and i know there's a million of them out there and this one looks really cool i was looking at this from the show notes um and i mean like christian was just really excited about it it sounds really cool to have all of these features built in not only to your phone but into one app um and have that flexibility to create great quality video because really we've talked about that value of video and how important live video is how important you know short form video is and having something like this would be really really cool and by yeah. the way, if you check out their website, uh, it's uh, musemedge.com. They actually have some really great um, vid- basically videos to show you how a lot of the features work, like the blue screen feature, the magic color feature, um, applying different filters. Uh, this thing's got some really like it's got some really awesome stuff in it. Cool, cool. So I, before we have Jen uh, tell people where she can be found. I have some, I, I've been, the nice part about not being on video tonight is that I've been able to scroll through Jen's Instagram, <laughs> and uh, and I've got some questions here that have to be, that have to be answered. So, okay. dog, what is the dog's name? The dog is Roxy. She is a Pomeranian who thinks she's a German Shepherd, okay. um, so she's, she's a whole lot of crazy and about 12 pounds, but That's she's okay. awesome. <laughs> and how old is she? Because she's got a, a little bit of a gray face like she's my girl. She's got some gray, and she's uh, just over nine years now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. And it looks like the nails make, uh, the fingernails make quite yes. the appearance. So they is do. This, this is, it seems like this is an ongoing trend. I've had uh, long claws since college, which yeah. was many, many moons ago. Um, and yeah, I, I live for the long nails. I can't function without them. People always ask me how I live with them. I say, I can't live without them. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And will you tell our guests or our attendees, and thank you, Nats, for sticking around uh, despite our video troubles tonight, uh, and tell our attendees where or guests where they can find you. Yeah, so uh, as we said at the top of the, the show, I'm at Jens underscore trends. That's Jen with two N's because I was born in the 80s with a bazillion of Jennifers, and I'm always Jen with two N's. So J-E-N-N-S underscore trends on Twitter and on Instagram. My website is jenstrends.com. Uh, I have a fully functioning blog. I post one blog post a week. Every other week is dedicated to Instagram, and I've written a Uh, almost 150 blog posts just on the topic of Instagram. So if you have questions, the answers are there for you, I promise. And if not, I will write a blog post for you. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for being a guest here uh, with us tonight, Jen. You were you were wonderful to have on, and certainly know your stuff, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Hopefully, we'll do it again, and maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do we'll, a special episode on forensics and and law enforcement. And we'll really drive we everybody to. crazy. <laughs> Actually, we really should. Yeah. <laughs> Bore, bore some people to death, but we'll have fun. That's or, all that matters. Or you know, That's you could get into like you know, maybe maybe we could get into talking about you know some different um, talking about some different like things that people need to be aware of maybe for privacy. I was, yeah. yeah, I love getting into the legalities of it and the tools that are best to protect against legal implications with user generated content, um, contests, you know, all those sorts of things. I would love to do a session on. I, I always work with my clients from the legal perspective as much as I can, and I'm not a lawyer, but I, I always look out for that as best I can. But you, but you pretend to be one in front of the client. I totally do. Yeah, I like it. I like <laughs> it. Uh, and we do need to bring Mark Marty on as we've had uh, several of our guests, uh, Officer Mark Marty, several of our guests uh, have our attendees uh several in our audience have talked about you know you got to do stuff for for parents to let them know uh about some some information safety uh things like that and mark uh, did you meet mark did either of you meet mark at social media uh, Mark? i did Network? not yeah I, i've heard the name but i, ha- I didn't get yeah it. he's doing a lot of stuff in the with help race right now uh, as far as uh, helping to end child trafficking, and uh, so it, probably a good idea to have him on uh, and talk about child safety online as well uh, nice. and p- parental issues. So the the maybe that would be a combined uh, if we could get four people in, Christian. I don't know. That might um, be. A, we we could probably do that. Yeah, I have to just yeah. Might might be a thought. Uh, so we could Christian, totally do that. Want to yeah. wrap us up? Absolutely. By the way, Jen, one last thing. I just want to let you know. Um, one, I want to thank you for being on tonight's show. We'll definitely have you back. Um, we can talk about whatever topic you want to talk about. I mean, I, I like. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea actually that you, you proposed of you know getting into maybe some of the like uh, you know the law enforcement side of things. I think that could be a really good um, topic to talk about. Um, and I also sent you a link actually to another video app. Um, it's one that I use for pretty much all of my filming um, with nice. my smartphone, but it also works on Android. So nice. check Twitter. You've got a link there. Awesome. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, uh, so with that, I want to just, uh, thank everybody for watching tonight. Um, just, uh, you know, a couple of notes. Uh, we'll have next week's show, um, at 9 PM Eastern time on Thursday. You can check us out at facebook.com forward slash social chefs. And, uh, so that's the first thing. Next thing, if you want to get on our email list, we will actually send you uh, a blog recap. So we put a blog recap out, pretty much tomorrow uh, with the video along with um, all of the topics and links that we've talked about. Um, but we'll, you know, if you opt into our email list, we'll send you a link as well directly to that post along with uh, letting you know what topics we're going to talk about next week. Um, and lastly, if you haven't connected with us, uh, these are the best places to do that. Um, we're over on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, as well as Instagram, um, as well as Snapchat at social chefs. So uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for watching, Jen and Nick. It's been a great show, and thanks so much for uh, joining us this week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, bye. Bye Bye-bye.